What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. So if you watched my last video on the untold truth of lobe separation on camshaft selection, then you got an earful. I know it may seem contradictory to what you may have known, but let me tell you from my experience, when I first started coming around DV, I had to relearn some of my old ways as well. So today, we're going to go in detail about how to pick the right cam the first time. So how do you go about picking your camshaft? Okay, that is a question that I'm posing to my viewers. Most chances the average guy and gal are calling the cam manufacturer and they're getting a recommendation from them and they're buying the cam, lifters, so on and so forth. But how do you know what you're getting is what your engine actually wants? Well, here's from my experience. When I met DV probably close to 20 years ago, I did what you guys and gals did. I called them, got a cam recommendation for an exact spec of an engine build, and then I would call them back a week later or a couple days, and guess what? They didn't recommend the same cam. So this is from the same manufacturer, but yet they could not recommend the same cam because I'm talking to a different person. Why is that? That is because the person that you're talking to, they're trying to sell you a cam, not necessarily the right cam for your combination. They're looking out of a catalog and making their decisions based off of the inputs that you tell them, and they're ultimately just guessing at what they think is optimal. And that is so far from what needs to happen. How do we compare one engine against another as far as output? If you go on YouTube, there are thousands of engine dyno tests out there that you can watch from now until kingdom come. But, the way that you can gauge an engine performance is based off of the foot pounds that it makes on the dyno in relation to the cubic inches of the engine itself. For instance, you know, my mixed up boss, which was in my last video, and if you haven't watched that video talking about LSA, you need to check it out before you watch this. That way it kind of makes sense for you. But we wound up making 1.39 foot-pounds per cube, which is kind of short of where DV and my goal normally is because we always strive for 1.4 foot-pounds per cubic inch on pump gas. That's an important part, on pump gas. You should be able to obtain 1.4 foot-pounds per cubic inch using pump fuel. So when you look through here, I'm going to put up a chart here over my face so that you can see this. 1.2 to 1.25 is your average pro, okay? That's what you're going to see normally across the internet. If someone has a better understanding of things, you can see up to 1.3, 1.35. That lets you know that they're on the right track. They actually have a really good understanding they're making good foot-pounds per cube, but when you get into the 1.4 range, about only 1% of the videos that you will see, if that, those engines will obtain those kinds of foot-pounds per cube. So why is this important? Well, let's talk about it. The 128 cam formula is pretty much the formula that you need for a 10 and a half to one compression street engine. Um, you're using the intake valve per displacement and I will put the formula in the bottom down here so that you can see how to actually derive your lobe separation angle using this formula. Okay, what you need to be aware of your lobe separation angle dictates the engine's ability to make torque and how much of it. it. It is the bar that sets that. The other part of the factor that comes into the equation is the overlap of the camshaft itself. 
What is overlap? Overlap is the amount of time that both the intake and exhaust valves are actually open. That overlap period dictates the RPM range that the engine will produce that peak torque that I talked about with the LSA. It dictates the RPM range in which you will get that. So using those two things in conjunction with each other, once you determine the proper lobe separation angle for your engine, you can move over and say, okay, my engine is gonna be a, a street strip deal. It's gonna require X amount of overlap to get me there. And when you put those two things together, like any other mathematical equation, it's gonna give you one duration number. So basically you're fixing, you're solving the formula by working from the LSA to the overlap to get your duration number. Now, DB has this sophisticated cam, pro, uh, cam program that he's worked on for years, pretty much ever since I've met him, and it goes into way more detail than this simplified formula. But this simplified formula is still better than anything that's out there in the real world being used to select cams because most of those methods is based on one, maybe some experience, or two, at best, it's a guess. And when it comes to buying a camshaft, like I stated in the previous video, you're not buying the camshaft. You are buying horsepower and torque and you want it to do a specific job. You determine how much overlap you need. Well, take a look at this chart that DV did, and it pretty much is a simplified chart, and it starts out with like toe and street, street performance, so on and so forth, and it gives you the required amount of overlap. Now, this is where you really have to be honest with yourself and your intention with the engine. Say if you're picking the street strip, but it's more street, you will want to err on the side of the lower overlap number versus the other side. If it's more strip, of course, you're going to go the other way and pick the larger number. And so you can see how it goes all the way up to full race. So once you determine that number, that is going to dictate where your engine and where the camshaft is going to make its power. Like I told you before, engines are dictated by physics. A given cubic inch can only make X amount of foot pounds on a given fuel. You really can't change that. There was a lot of people saying that, well, uh, LS engines require uh, wider lobe separations. Do they? Hmm. You know, while I haven't personally dyno tested any LS engines, I know that DV has. I'm a Ford guy. Remember, I'm a Ford guy. And most of my testing has been on Fords, but take a look at this video here that was done by Richard Holdner and you know Richard Holdner has done a ton of videos on dyno test. He did an experiment where he had three cams ground on three different LSAs and tested them in his engine. And you can see the results for yourself. I mean, and that goes to prove that what is the accepted norm of what people think may not always be right. Like I said, it's not about what we think the engine should have as far as the camshaft. It's what the engine actually wants to deliver what you actually want it or need it to do. Does that make sense? I know that sounded kind of weird, but in reality, that is it. Um, like I said, DV has a more sophisticated program where we can go in and enter in every aspect of the engine build and it will spit out the perfect specs. Now with like any other equation, the more data points you have, the better off you are. 
but if you put junk into the equation, you're going to get junk as a result. So going back to what I was stressing about overlap and being honest about the intended purpose of the vehicle, that is a tr that's going to dictate where your cam ends up. As you can see, we barely scratched the surface with this 128 cam formula. This thing has been on a lot of forums. It's taken a lot of beating over the years, but we're going to eventually convince people. That's survived every beating. That's right, because no one else can supply a formula that does what this does. Does that make sense? No. But anyways, now, you get the point. Well, let me make a point here. <clears throat> That 128 formula is just a tiny piece of my overall CAM program, right? <clears throat> I put that 128 thing out because a lot of end it applies to a lot of engines, mm -hmm. but mostly small block Chevrolets, right? So I put it out so that you guys wouldn't spend less time being frustrated or not even knowing that you had the wrong cam in your engine, right? And and this is the irony. I get so much flack for trying to help out those people who don't know any better. Um, I want to thank each and every one of you who has subscribed to my channel. And if you haven't done it yet, go ahead and subscribe if you like the content that I'm doing. We just went over 20,000 subs and I personally want to thank each and every one of you who's done that and taken the time to watch these videos. These videos are fun to do. I hope you learned something from it because I was freely given this knowledge over time working with DV and my own experiences, but DV were trying to get his channel built back up since he lost 27,000 subs. So if you'll go to David Vizard and subscribe to him, not David Vizar Performance, because there is a difference. That was his old channel. You can continue getting this um, in-depth engine tech. And since Marvin's passing, I'm trying to step more into his role, although I'll never be able to replace him because he was such good guy and really good at what he did. But you're gonna be seeing me a lot more in DV's videos and you're gonna be seeing DV more in my videos. So we're gonna be working hand in hand and I'm looking forward to that. Like I said, I've been working with DV for nearly 20 years. I always learn something when I'm around him and I hope that I retain just that much of his knowledge that he's given me over the years because it's he is such a valuable asset to the hot rodding community. So with that, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and all that other stuff that I never say because I believe that should be subscribed to based off of the merit of the channel, and I hope you like the content. So until next time, this is Andy from Unity Motorsports Garage. I'll catch you later.